So I was out the other night with a friend of mine, sitting at the bar and knocking back a couple beers. And after a short time talking about the happenings in our lives, someone came up to the bar and ordered a bitter. My buddy turned to me puzzled and said, What kind of beer is a bitter, Ryan? Is that just a way to describe beer? I told him the answer to both his questions was yes, and that a bitter was an English style of beer that encompassed quite a few different strengths and colors of beer. And while we may have moved on with our conversation after that, I had nagging questions left in my head. How did bitters emerge out of the English brewing scene? What exactly does it mean to label your beer a bitter? And what makes one bitter more bitter than another bitter bitter? Hey, this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and oftentimes in the beer world we come up with names for styles that don't often describe the beer very well. I'm talking styles like Imperial Stout or Obscure Hyper Beer. But on the other end of the spectrum we have the bitter style. A name and descriptor all rolled into one word. Today's topic was suggested by Paul Tosley, and I'm so thankful he brought this up because diving into the history of the bitter has led to some interesting and great beer facts. Let's dive into it. English brewers, the originators of pale ales and bitters, were the last of Europe's brewers to adopt the hop as a bittering agent in beer. Up until the arrival of Flemish immigrants in the 16th century, the brewers in England were flavoring their beers with the mixtures of herbs and spices called the gruet, and all those beers that were flavored that way were referred to as ale. These ales were very cloudy, pretty low in alcohol, and came in a variety of flavors. Once hops were accepted by brewers, the new product was re referred to as beer to distinguish it from the gruet-based ales. Within a generation or two, hop-based beer had almost completely replaced gruet ales. Hops bring an antiseptic quality in addition to their pure bitterness, so not only did the beer taste better, but it prevented a lot of microbes from taking up residence in the beer, making it a more consistent product as well. The most common beers of the 17th and 18th centuries were porters and stouts. These styles are dark, malty, full-bodied, and don't exactly showcase the bitterness of hops. The reason behind this was that the malting process usually left the malts very dark, smoky, and well-colored. In the 18th century, some really good maltsters were producing quality pale malts, but they were generally too expensive for most brewers to use. Even so, some pale beers were being produced, and they decided to adopt the old word ale to be different from the darker beers that were all the rage at the time. In a similar way, the phrase bitter ale was used to describe a paler brew that got more of its flavor from the hops. The Industrial Revolution and the adoption of inventions like the thermometer in the malting process made pale malt much, much cheaper and more widely available. Suddenly, pale ales were overtaking darker beers in popularity all around the British Empire. Pale ales and bitter ales were produced in all variety of strengths and levels of bitterness to satisfy all different kinds of pub goers. In addition, at a time where beer taxes were levied based on the gravity of the wart, the modest alcohol content of pale beers were generally the cheapest option for drinkers. But this is where things get a little cloudy, and no, I'm not talking about a fresh New England IPA. Some beer historians disagree as to whether pale ales and bitters deserve to be called separate styles. Looking back through old English brewing records, it's hard to draw a line between what some brewers call the bitter ale and what others call the pale ale. The malt bills and hop additions are pretty similar in most cases. Perhaps the most common distinction brewers made was that the hand-pulled draft cask ales were called bitters, while most bottled ales were called pale ales. But no matter the history, the heart and soul of the bitter is its malt. English pale malt is revered amongst brewers around the world as it contributes a lot of sugars to the wort while being very easy to use. Coming in a little darker and more full than the light pilsner malts of the continent, bitters tend to have a slightly more amount of body and malt flavor than their European counterparts. As bitters run from gold amber to full copper in color, an addition of specialty malts is in order to really dial things in on the malt flavor. Lighter versions make minimal use of specialty malts, while darker ones rely on more or simply small amounts of very dark malts. 
The color enhancing malts are crystal on the light end of the spectrum to black malt on the dark end. They contribute flavor, mouthfeel, and nuance to the final beer. A light to medium caramel color is a bitter requisite. It's not unusual and wholly acceptable to include an adjunct in the brew. Most commonly, flaked maize is used, but sugar is also sometimes employed. But of course, a bitter wouldn't be bitter without a good dose of hops. The modern hop head who downs double or triple IPAs regularly may seem a bit restrained when it comes to bitters, but the goal of a bitter is balance, not to set the record for cramming the most hops into a single beer. The hop character is classically British, most typically with East Kent Goldings and Fuggles in large amounts. Target and Challenger were used less often and some American hops are even beginning to make their way into brewer's recipes. And of course, the subtleties are lent to the beer by water and yeast, but we could spend three videos going into the detail on that. Bitters are often categorized into three groups based on their alcohol content. The most common is the ordinary bitter, which have ABVs under 4% and prove to be the most sessionable of bitters. They are dark gold or copper in color and have plenty of malt balance for the hops and they make great summer beers. The next step up is the special or best bitter. Still under 4.6% ABV, they are a step up from the ordinary bitter. They are a little more filling and have a more of a malt character, but they make up for it with some extra hops. Most bitters you'll find today will fall into this category. Finally are the extra special or strong bitters. They range from 4.6 to 6% alcohol and are oftentimes a deeper caramel color and pack a little bit bigger punch. They are deceptively complex in flavor and are often available seasonally as opposed to being year-round offerings. After diving into the history behind the bitter, it's become clear to me that they are anything but a boring beer style. They are complex, full of history, a combination of tradition and decades of brewing innovation. They are truly one of the gems in the crown jewels of English brewing. Thanks again to Paul Tosley for suggesting this week's topic. If you have an idea for a beer related video you'd like me to cover, please let me know down in the comment section below. While you're down there, smash that like button and check the link in the description to the Beer By The Numbers Facebook page for more great beer content. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer By The Numbers and I'll see you next week with some more bitter beer content.